Welcome everyone. It's good to see you this afternoon. We're going to give this one more minute to see if we get uh, can get more people out of the waiting room into here, and then we will get started. Good evening. Hello. How are you enjoying the first day of spring? Yes. Yeah. All right. Everyone. All right. Well, we have. Trying to see how many people we have here with us now. Excellent. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. I know your time is very valuable and I appreciate you coming to share it here with me today. Welcome to this uh, session on how to create the social emotional learning classroom. Um, I am your solved presenter today. And this is part of um, the Tail Academy, which has been Put together by New York State Department of Education to help us learn uh, from the pandemic and think across learning environments. So how do we do everything we do in whatever format we happen to be in, whether that's online or in person or some combination of both. Just for your uh, knowledge today, this session is being recorded. You will receive that recording. So um, you'll get an informational email at the end of this that will tell you about your um, credits as well as have any information from the session so you have a record of that. Um, if you don't want to be on camera, I completely understand, but if you, when you speak, do come on camera, I would really appreciate it. It's always very helpful to me and it helps build a wonderful learning community for everyone. Please take a moment to read our norms. It says on this big blue one to be sure to have your camera on, but that is optional. But please do know that I will be starting and ending on time. And I ask that you do your very best to be here in the moment with us now. I know you've had a busy day and you have a lot to do after this meeting, but um, Take an increased stance and see if you can be in the moment as much as possible. I'll try to keep it really interesting so that you won't have trouble doing that. All right. So here, I'm your presenter today. I'm Dr. Caroline Hoppenwasser. I'm um, an educational consultant at Solved. I have a doctorate in literacy education and I was for uh, 20 plus years an educator in public school, as well as in teacher prep at SUNY New Paltz. So now I'd love you in the chat to tell us a little bit about who you are. So the grades you teach, the subjects you teach, and something that's making you happy today, setting the stage for social emotional learning. Let's think of things that are making us feel good and happy to be in the world today. And I'd love to see the grade levels we have represented because we'll be thinking about how we can um, amend or adapt certain practices we're going to talk about today for different grade levels. Here come the chats. They all start to come in. All right, so we have many different grade levels coming in. We have preschool, special ed, K through five. Ah, and Arifa is loving the sunshine today. I apologize to anyone whose name I mispronounce. I'm going to do my best. So I like to say the names of the people who have uh, I'm reading from, but I don't always get it right. We've got grade three. We've got three K through five. All right, so we have some different levels coming in today. Wonderful. 
Excellent. I'm going to tell you what's making me happy today is that the first day of spring here, I live in the Mid Hudson Valley, uh, is a beautiful day and it's 50 degrees. So I'm, that's what's making me happy today. So let's look at our agenda. Our essential question today is one big question. How can we help our students build their social emotional learning skills? And we're going to do that through identifying the key compon components of the SEO classroom and then explore different techniques to develop those components. So it's uh, very simple sounding, but we know that's very complex overall. I would like to share with you now that we have a note catcher. I'm going to put the link to it in the chat for you. And I wanna show you what happens when you open it. I'm gonna do it right here with you. It's going to ask you to make a copy. So go ahead and make a copy. Oh, Sarira says today is her new year, the Persian new year. Very cool. All right. So in your note catcher, you're going to have a link at the top to slides from today's presentation. It will also take you through the different activities we're going to do with important links. Mm -hmm. So you can choose to use this to take notes throughout or not. It's your choice on how you want to do this, but everything we're going to do is going to be collected here so that you have access to it easily afterwards. So take a moment and open that. If you can't um, or you have any technical difficulties today, please let us know in the chat. I have a wonderful um, technical support here today. In the she's listed under admin solved. Her name is Brooke. She's happy to help us. So please just put it in the chat and let us know. All right. So you've opened your note catcher. And the first thing we're going to do today is just watch a short, short video to make sure we're all on the same page of what, here we go, um, the components of SEL are. So the first activity on your note catcher has a diagram that looks like this, but it's um, completely filled out. And we're gonna watch together and you can take notes or you can just listen. Oh wait, I'm gonna escape, excuse me, and make sure I've shared my screen so that you can hear my sound. I like to double check that. Hold on one moment, share screen, share sound, beautiful. And I would just appreciate if in the chat, you could make sure uh, you let me know, yes, you can hear the sound or no, you cannot. Did you know that there are a set of skills that are equally as important as teaching math, science, English language arts, history, and others? As a matter of fact, many education and psychology researchers have deemed these to be the most important skills we can teach because they are the foundation for any learning to take place. These are SEL skills. SEL stands for Social and Emotional Learning, which consists of a set of skills that help us become self-disciplined, manage our emotions, work well with others, and achieve all our goals in life. A multitude of research studies show time and time again that students strong in SEL will thrive in all areas of their lives, including their academics, career, mental and physical health, relationships, finances, and so on. The Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning, also known as CASEL, is a trusted source for high-quality information about SEL. They support schools and policymakers around the nation with tools and resources to support the implementation of high-quality SEL. CASEL has identified five social and emotional learning competencies. Self-awareness is the ability to accurately recognize your own emotions, thoughts, and values, and understand how they influence your behavior. It includes identifying emotions, accurate self-perception, recognizing strengths, weaknesses, self-confidence, and self-efficacy. Self-management involves self-discipline in regulating your emotions, thoughts, and behaviors in different situations so you can reach your goals. It includes impulse control, 
stress management, self-discipline, self-motivation, goal setting, and organizational skills. Social awareness is the ability to empathize and understand the perspectives of others, including those from diverse backgrounds and cultures, and understand social and ethical norms for behavior. Relationship skills involve communication skills, conflict resolution, and working with diverse groups of people and ideas. And responsible decision-making involves making good decisions, taking into account the impact of your choices on yourself, others, and your community. It includes identifying problems, analyzing situations, solving problems, evaluating, reflecting, and ethical responsibility. The red skills are related to the self, the blue are social skills, and when you integrate these, you make responsible decisions. The Mindset Mastery SEL curriculum addresses these five competencies comprehensively. We okay, so now we have, go to this slide, we have um, a definition, a working definition of these five components that Castle has listed as our big SEL um, components. If we can do these things, what, what I find amazing about this, the research on this is it doesn't just so you do better in school, you do better in everything. You're gonna do better in academics. You're gonna do better in your career. You're gonna have um, improved mental and physical health. Even your finances can be affected. And if you think about it and you think about the adults in your life who have strong SEL skills and who don't, you can sort of probably see a correlation for yourself. But I just wanted to reiterate. So we've got the color coded here. This is red, self-management and self-awareness. I'm thinking about and learning to take care of and understand myself. Then in blue, social awareness and relationship skills, I'm thinking about how to take what I know about myself and be in relationship with others. And then both of those things come into play with the green where we have responsible decision making, where I have to think about what I know about managing myself, what I know about managing my relationships with others to make really good decisions. So it's, I love how they can condense it down into this very simple graphic, but it's a life's work to be able to understand these things. And I just wanna share this with you briefly as well. If you're interested in knowing more about the Castle 5 or how it aligns with SEL benchmarks, there is another course I can tell you about at the end of this one um, that goes more in depth. But I want you just to be aware of this right now. There are also um, New York State benchmarks. They use the Castle 5, these in the circle, to align with benchmarks for New York State. And the they are, we have three benchmarks, two that go with the self. Young people develop self-awareness that nurtures and affirms a strong sense of identity, informs decisions about their actions, and builds a sense of agency. That goes with our two self, self-management and self-awareness. We have um I hate to interrupt. I, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but are you, um, I was just going to double check on your slides. Did you mean for them to be full screen? They're, I think they're a half screen right now. Are we on this one? Um, it shows the note catcher, the note catcher slides with the green on the side. Oh, no, it's sharing. It's not, I'm not sharing the screen, screen I mean to be sharing. So thank you for checking. Yes, for sure. Oh, heavens. That's all I can no say problem. about technology today, my friends. <laughs> let me um, let me stop sharing and make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Share screen. <gasps> it switched screens. Okay, here we go. No worries. We're here. Awesome. Thank That's good. You. Thank you. Okay. So we have our circle and we have our alignment to NYSED's benchmarks. So these first two align with the red. 
The second two align with this blue, where young people are using social awareness and interpersonal skills to establish, navigate, and maintain mutually supportive relationships. And then last, we have the third benchmark, which is that young people demonstrate intentional decision-making skills and behaviors that consider social, emotional, and physical safety and well-being in personal school and community content. So this is um, part of what we now are supposed to be working on. Well, as teachers, we know we've always been working on that, correct? I would say that there is not a teacher out there who doesn't work on this in some way. Um, oh, I, mm -hmm. okay. So I'm sorry that the video wasn't playing with the sound. Something went terribly wrong, but here we are. And now I think we're sharing the correct thing. So today our goal is I'm going to, we're going to engage in two practices and then we're going to do an exploration on your own and share. But the first thing I want us to do is look at um, activity two, where we explore strategies. So if you have your note catcher and you are able to open it, if uh, it's just been put in again, you're going to see this activity. It's called Rosebud and Thorn, and it is a strategy for the self. I'm learning to manage my own thinking and feeling. So I'd like you to take a few minutes to do this for yourself. And because it's Monday, you can say one rose or something positive that happened. It could be last week since we've just started. One bud or something I'm looking forward to in this upcoming week. One thorn or something that I need help with. And then our last box is one thing I will try to turn my thorn into a rose. So we're thinking about how can I take the thing that's the challenge and turn it into something positive that's happening. So I'm going to set a timer for two minutes. And I want you to think about this on your own. And you can fill it out in your note catcher. And then we're going to do... Um, some sharing. I'm not sure if someone is making a comment or they came off mute accidentally. All right, so the timer is going for two minutes to think about your rose, your bud, and your thorn. All right, I'm going to ask you 
to come into the chat now. And I would love for some people to share with us their rows, the something positive that either happened last week or happened um, or is happening this week. Or I am very happy for you to come off of mute and share with us. So right now we're typing roses. Anyone feeling brave and want to come off mute and share with us? Waiting for some messages in the chat. We had a wonderful day in our classroom celebrating St. Patrick's Day with different activities. Ooh, what fun, Christy. Thank you for sharing. Other roses. All right. I hope you're out there with Christy. Here we go. Here's Jenna. My students are excited about the new unit we are starting. Ooh, Jenna, that makes me want to know what the unit is. Put that in the chat for me. I'm, in, I'm intrigued. My rose came in the mail. Melissa, that's very intriguing as well. I want more. Students are using their decoding strategies during their independent reading. Huh, that's, that's amazing. <gasps> We're studying the podcast serial. Oh, I love the podcast serial. Wonderful. Thank you, people who are sharing your roses. Now, what is a bud or something you're looking forward to in the next week? Ah, students excited about Spirit Week this week. Amazing. Who doesn't love Spirit Week? Evelyn, do y'all do different things during the week where you have different days and people wear different things or... Um, we would have, yes, we would have hat week and pajama day or hat day and pajama day. What are some things you're looking forward to? People, what are your buds? Share the good things because then we're going to get to the thorns. Or if you would like to, let's, I'm looking forward to springtime. Thank you, Denise. Yes, me too. Now, we, we start, we think about the positive things, and then we think about something that might be a thorn, something we need help with, whether it's personal, professional. What are some of the thorns that you're facing? Um, oh, Sharon has a big one. Navigating. Yeah. Is someone off mute to talk? I can't. Oh, need to do another thing. Okay. So uh, Sharon says, navigating all of the teaching requirements that are making me an open-minded seasoned veteran teacher, I feel incompetent because I feel like a hamster running on a wheel with no water nor food break. Does anyone else feel like that? I Yes. Next. So... Um, time management is a thorn, having too many expectations on you. Um, we're getting a lovely mix of thorns and then things we're excited about. Because <laughs> um, some thorns are behaviors from some of the students. Getting more parents to complete the school surveys, keeping students engaged in algebra. Oh, yes. All right, so here's the really challenging part. All of these things are helping us self-monitor where we are, how we're doing, and manage them. And then the last one is often the hardest one. It is how do we think, what is something I can try to turn this thorn, this, I'm going to use Denise's because I can see it. I don't know if it's um, 
getting students to do their homework daily. That's a thorn. That's a problem. How can, what could we try this week? What could Denise try to turn that thorn into a rose? So we're trying to do a reframe. Who has any ideas for any of these um, thorns and how we might reframe them and turn them into roses for the upcoming week? This is gonna where we get to use our real good teacher creativity. One thing I will try is staying focused on the skills and teaching what I know works. So Sharon, Sharon shared before that she feels like the hamster on the wheel because there's too many things going on. So one thing that she has control over, so it's all about thinking about what do I have control over is um, staying focused on teaching what she knows works. So instead of trying to do all the things, try to do a few things well, and then we're going to come back and if we're doing this in our classroom regularly, so imagine we have every Monday, we think about doing this together. And as a teacher, I model, I think about doing this. Sharon can come back next week and think about, was she able to do that? Did that help her teaching experience change from one of being on the wheel to being a rose, something positive where she felt like she had a real connection or she had a moment where she really did a good job? <laughs> so. Um, Selena says to try and incorporate some coloring or fun activities that would coincide with their homework. So pairing something fun with an activity that has to be done. Turn my thorn into a rose by catching up on paperwork. This is a real dilemma. Oh, it is a real dilemma. But you can then feel next week you're setting yourself up to have another happy moment where you can look at what went well. So this activity is something to, that can be modified for students of all ages. And I think it's really important for us to do as teachers, because I think a lot of people feel like Sharon, sometimes as teachers, trying to balance all of the things we know we are required to do. Um, so this is one way we can start managing and learning and exploring the self part of our um, Castle Five. So I want you throughout this presentation to think about the grade levels and students you're working with and how you might modify this to do with them. So how could this idea of rosebud and thorn be used with pre-K people? How can it be used with high school people? So you've already got great ideas. So here's what we're gonna do next. We're going to um, move into, we're going to some exploration and then discussion. And then if we have time, we're gonna do another um, activity together at the end. So what I want us to look at now, um, we're actually gonna go to activity three on your note catcher. And this is going to include looking at a Padlet. So I want you to think about um, of these big, topics, self-awareness and self-management being the self, social awareness and relationship skills being others, or responsible decision-making being both. For the purposes of our time together today, which one would you like to focus on right now? You're going to have access to this Padlet and all of the resources on it afterwards, but what I'd like us to do, and I'm going to put the link to the Padlet in the chat as well, as it is on your note catcher. But our Padlet is organized in the three big um, components, self, others, and responsible decision-making. And you have a variety of resources there. So I'd like you to choose one of the big topics, and then you're going to explore your Padlet for 10 minutes and take some notes. You can, if this um, form that format I have works for you, I have, here's your category, here's the activity. Um, this one was student interested in interviews. 
in pairs and then present their partner's responses in class. So that's our social or others category. And the benefits is that students practice active listening and affirming partner's ideas. And then thinking about uh, another teacher who did this, thinking about the limitations of how she was using it is this is the beginning of the year activity, but I could do regular activities that build throughout the year. So you might, this might be something um, you, where you just fill in the benefits and think about the limitations later. You can make it work for you. It's your note catcher, it's here with the link to the Padlet. So the first thing I'd like you to do is put in the chat whether you're going to be looking at the self, others, or both. So are you going to be doing self-awareness and management? Are you going to be doing others, which is social awareness and relationship skills? Are you going to be doing both, which is um, decision making? And then we're going to, I'm going to set a timer for you to have an opportunity to explore that Padlet resource and take notes. And at the end of that time, I will put you into a breakout room and you will be with people who did all of the different categories. And your job will be to share an activity that you learned about that you would like to try in your classroom and think would be, would be helpful for your colleagues to know. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions? If not, I'm going to set our timer and we're going to get started with our Padlet exploration. All right, so I see a lot of people are doing responsible decision making. That's awesome. Self awareness, going to learn about the self. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to stop sharing. It's asking me to create a canvas. Um, what is asking you to create a canvas? When I went to the self awareness, um, okay, I'm back there. It created, it, it gave me a pop up and it told me to create a canvas. Guess the canvas account. Oh, for the, um, for which the top one in the self-awareness? Yeah, building now I'm at building strength and strategies. I, I must have did something I wasn't supposed to. Okay, I was looking at self student scenario. Am I supposed to be in that one or I could just use any one of them you can look at any of them so that if that one's not working for you just scroll down and you'll see several more options to look at for self oh, okay. self-direction yeah I see, I see you have a youtube video here 
or is it playing? Yes, it okay. should. If you click on any of these resources, they should I'm open for you. Let me see if, let, let me know if that one works, Mark. Yeah, the video is working. So we'll watch the video and go to a couple of Awesome. Thank you.
you have one more minute and then I'm going to open up the breakout rooms for you to be able to go and share ideas you've gathered. All right, everyone, now that you've had about 10 minutes to look through and become more knowledgeable about practices for your particular topic, you're going to be put in a breakout room with people who may have been with the same topic or a different one. And your job is to share with each other um, and think through what are the benefits, uh, limitations, how you might need to uh, adjust depending on your grade level. So um, here we go. I'm starting, I'm opening all the breakout rooms, so you should be able to join and move yourself there. And if you cannot, our wonderful tech helper will make sure we get you to a breakout room. Looks like we're having good success. Except for room five. Poor Mark is all alone. Oh, no, people are joining. <laughs> Here we go.
Oh, thank you. Brooke, can we put Mark in a different room, please? He was having trouble in his um, con connecting with people. I think some of them were having some sound issues. I'll have to put him in a waiting room instead. Okay. He's joining. I think he was in room five before and that wasn't working. More. It's not giving me an option to put him in a, a, a room. Usually it does. Oh, heavens. <laughs> I see that as well. Mark, are you able to go to the side? Um, oh, I know let me see if the, you want, it, want me to see if there's a uh, get the icon for a breakout room. Maybe so. Uh, we just, my... Oh, wait, we wanted to be able to put him in a different room because he couldn't hear anyone in his room. Really? Hmm. Yes. So that was, um, we, need, we need him to be able to be in a different. Okay. And Brenda tried to join group five. Okay, so Brenda, are you there? You and Mark are now a group right here in this main room. Yes. Hey, Brenda. <laughs> Hi. Yes, thank you. What was the topic that you had chosen? Brenda? I see Brenda Christie and you two, administrative and Carolyn. I'm happy to talk to you, Mark. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> Mark, Mark what is did you Well, I, I watched the video and it talked about um, creating, um, I think it was self-awareness. I didn't write that down because I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get back and forth. Yeah, self-awareness and self-direction. So the video is talking about ways of getting students to be more attentive to what they need to do for themselves to be successful. A lot of it was about um, them understanding their inner feelings, like how can you get them to express themselves, move, you could create mood board, um, have them create images, um, need for teachers to do check-ins on students and follow how they are acting and reacting throughout during out the day um, how can they regulate their temperament um, activities active initiation or intensiveness i'm sorry and how to balance out one day so um the other that active attentiveness and balancing out regulation temp temperament are some of the things I deal with because I have like eighth and ninth graders. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And you know the emotional balance is all over the place. One day they want to be still children and the next thing they the next day they want to be adult and grown. Uh -huh. yes. The attention span and puberty is is like off the charts. You know, they're, you know right. they're trying to find their identity. They're trying to um, figure out what relation, how, what a relationship is, and what it looks like. Uh, how For to sure. balance their day. Yeah, I, I, so I was in before I started working for Solved. I was in um, in the intermediate school, so I only had. So I, I'm from Texas, so. This intermediate school had fifth and sixth grade, and I mean the 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 emotions that these kids are dealing with, and don't understand or don't have the right guidance at home as well. So it's like I had one teacher that I would follow around. Um, just I would I would go to her classroom every single day, and she would just real quickly like um, kind of like an exit ticket, but it was like an entrance ticket, and so okay. she had she had on her on her door when her so her door was open and she would stand right by it 
and it kind of had like a mood, a mood radar kind of thing. And so they would walk in and they would kind of point just real quick. So in her head, she kind of had like a, she, cause she knew the kids so well. So it was like in her head, she knew, okay, someone so pointed to this, this, this. So she was able to kind of just keep an eye on them during class or pull them to the side or some type of thing of just being like, hey, what's going on today? Or or letting other teachers know that so-and-so may not be having a great day. Maybe don't go so hard on them if they forgot their homework, someone's sleepy, you know, that kind of thing. I think it's super important to understand that there's like, there's more to why a student maybe didn't do the homework assignment or that kind of thing. Yeah, I agree, but some the difficulty is, is knowing knowing the student and yeah and their environments. I I think a lot of for me, I noticed that they believe they understand and know a lot of stuff, but they don't have the context and content that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. So they misinterpretate what they believe they understand. For the sure. struggle is 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 um. Uh, Getting them to be able to decode and decipher some of the information that they actually get, to get real meaning out of it, and how it relates to how it relates to them in their their space or their 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 environment. Because I think they they a lot about what I, I like. I, I tell my students don't follow the follower because you believe this is leading to be able to lead on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, and and they be going, they go like this, duh, Mister Simon. Duh, what does that mean? So <laughs> most of y'all don't have a clue as what's going on, but you believe that you do. Somebody may have a strong personality, and you think he's right yeah. or they right, but they're just scared and they heard something, so they telling it to you. Yeah. If you don't understand it, don't. You know, ask for help. The big, big thing is to get them to ask for ask for the help that they need. Uh, thanks, Mark. So uh, we had a little trouble, everyone. Some people couldn't get into a breakout room. So we had our own breakout room in the main room. And I hope you had as interesting a discussion as we did um, and that you found some helpful tools and resources. What I would like to do now um to we have seven minutes left is um share a few more things and at do a little bit of goal setting so um let me share my screen and let me make sure i'm sharing the correct one this time i'm going to get it this one all right, so you should be seeing something that says responsible decision making scenario. So this is an uh, activity that we didn't have time to do today. You may have read more about it if you went into decision making, but you can look at it. It's on your note catcher and you can also find uh, more about it here on this side of the Padlet. But it is thinking about um, a lot about what Mark was just talking about was students trying to make decisions and they think they have all the information, but they don't really understand all of the context. So how yes. do we help them start to understand context? And um, so this is a decision making scenario and there are on the Padlet many more and you can quickly for your grade level modify them. So this one is um, for middle or high school, you're at the ball with your best friend and they are about to steal a shirt and they say, oh, it's fine. I've never gotten caught. What do you do? And a rewrite for first grade might be, we find a cute toy on a bench on the school playground and your friend wants to keep it and you like it too, but what do you do? So um, then you have a scenario um, template to help you figure out what is the problem? What are our options? What are the positive and negative outcomes of those options? So this is just a tool to help um, you think about that big, this big yellow square of responsible decision-making. The last activity I would like you to think about today 
is um, in regard to some of the things you've learned or activities that you came in contact with is uh, thinking about what's one thing I could go do immediately? What is something I could do? Could I go and figure out how to do some sort of form of uh, the rose, bud, and thorn journal with my students going forward, for myself even going forward? Um, What's one thing I might want to work on before the school year is over? I'm, I'm not going to go do it right now, but I want to get ready and start it before the school year is over. Or what's something that was really interesting and I, I want to learn more about? I need to get more information. So I would love it if you take a minute and think about that. Um, and I'm going to just share. This is from solved our social emotional learning courses so you're here at b how to create the sel classroom um, next monday we'll have some more tools for teaching and integrating sel in particular focusing on how you as the teacher can think about your sel practices that you use yourself and how to model them for students and then we have another one the importance of social emotional learning which will be coming back around and you can look at that on the um, solved website. And the last thing that I ask for you to do as well is um, fill out our PD form. But before you do that, I love in the chat or um, for you to come off mute to tell us what's one takeaway you would like to try in social emotional practices from this workshop. Hold on, I'm gonna open my chat so I can see. or anything from your um, goal setting that you'd like to share with us, whether it's something you wanna do before the school year is over or something you wanna learn more about. Taking students' mood at the beginning of the day. Yeah, I like that. I want to do that in my house some days. Take everybody's mood before we get going. And this last link I've put, because we do have just two minutes left, I'm going to ask, check in with staff and students. I love that, Brenda. Everybody's having feelings, not just the kids we're working with. This last link I've put in is a link to a really brief um, form for a PD survey so that SOLVED can improve and continue to help bring professional learning to you if you take a moment to fill it out. Melissa is going to incorporate music in the morning, set the tone with some music. I love that. Thank you for sharing. So I'm going to uh, just put the form link in. So you're done here today. You have your copy of your note catcher, but we will also put another copy of it, a uh, link to it in the email you'll get. You'll get information about your professional development credits and you will get a link to the recording of this. If you have any questions, my information is in the slides and you're welcome to email me. And um, as soon as you've opened this um, form, the link is in the chat. You're welcome to uh, log off and go finish the form. You're welcome to stay here a few minutes and finish it, but then our time together will be over. Yes, the link is also in the note catcher. It's down at the bottom, along with the link to registering for other courses from Solved on SEL or other topics. So thank you so much for coming today. And as promised, we are ending at 3.30 and I hope you have a lovely remainder of your afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. Be well, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.